Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with Games as the Engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? We believe you're out there. Hungry for stories for shared experiences. We can't see you, can't hear you, yet we will play for you. This night's offering is The Final Girl from designer Brett Gillen. To learn how we generate stories playing the game of The Final Girl, go check out our The Final Girl primer. I'm one of your players, John Holt, with me this week. Ken Breeze and Lucian Khan. Yay! All right. Welcome, Lucian. All right, so we're going to roll into Final Girl. We're going to get our premise and our character cast all sorted out, and we'll run over that as soon as we get that setup done for y'all. All right, so our setup, we've got an, a setting of an 18th century French garden estate during the early French Revolution. And our killer is th- these uh, killer trees or tree spirits, some sort of a plant-based threat that have been awakened by an artifact brought into this garden on this French estate. Our grid of characters, we have Monsieur Fleur, the meticulous head of house. We have Booth Van Schmeen, the tireless gamesman. We have Ovaltine, the flirtatious grandma. Julie Moreau, the inquisitive youth. Flemmy de Brooks, the half-witted revolutionary. Fromage, the hyperactive executioner. Rosalie, the haughty milkmaid. Elaine, the constipated general. Morgan, the avant-garde revolutionary. Lil Jacques, the criminal mastermind. <laughs> Satine, the saucy maid. And Madame Coraline, the... True believing astrologer. True believing astrologer. All right, cool. So that is our grid. We're going to start with introductory scenes. We're just at a, a carriage house, a large, busy carriage house. I mean, it's like an inn, basically, because it's like the carriage drivers like sleep here. And there's, you know, so it's it's a very bustling area but it's sort of like this transition point from the outside world to this like manicured garden estate the carriage house is basically off to the side of the road some vineyards here possibly as well it's very beautiful beautiful landscape you can see the vineyards it's like an early summer early to midsummer sort of area in terms of uh, seasons Many different carriages or rather large wagons arriving here to drop people off uh, with their servants and their uh, luggage. And so what time of day is it? Uh, Just before supper. So it's probably like a 5 p.m. Okay. And what's the scene about? Like what's kind of happening? The scene is about waiting for your ride into the garden. Like, so the scene is about like who gets to go, who gets to get on the next wagon. Maybe there's enough room for everyone or maybe there is. So we're sort of waiting to for our ride into the deeper. Lucian, do you have a character that you're drawn to? Yeah, I, I'm actually very interested in Booth von Smeen, the tireless gamesman. I'll be Ro- Morgan, the avant-garde revolutionary. Then I think I'm going to take Fromage here. All right. The hyperactive executioner. Excellent. <laughs> so the three of us are together, finishing up our, our supper, as it were, as we're waiting for this gilded transport to arrive carriage and so we're just at a table outside it's it's summer it's very it's warm out it's pleasant exactly the sun is maybe just going down it's five six o'clock the sun isn't all the way down magic hour the dusk is falling we have our wine uh, eating fromage my darling man would you be interested in an after dinner game of croquet i i like to keep my arms as taut as possible. Croquet helps with this. I would join you for a game, of course. You would play games while the world burns? Perhaps perhaps in your country you have time for such frivolous action, but our energies are spent elsewhere here. Don't you know that in order to obtain a viable strategy for the smashing of peasants and like, we must first find a way of making small pellets go through little gates. Smashing the peasantry. It will be the peasants that rise up and smash the smash the head off the snake. I like taking heads off. Whoever is going to be oui, taking oui. heads off, I will be there. I will drink to this. <laughs> Salut. 
I'm I'm not I'm not sure, uh, my darling fromage, that in your line of business this is a wise course of discussion. Come, let us wait for the carriage so that we may go to the croquet courts. That is the best part about being an executioner. It doesn't matter who is at the top. There's always work. And you'll have much more work if you join our crusade. I don't know. Last time I heard about the crusade, many people became all bloody-like. I like games, but not the sort where you become decapitate. You understand? I have never executioned... (laughs) I've never executed anyone... With a croquet mallet, I've executed someone with a noose and an axe and a gun and water and rats and oil, but never a mallet. There's a first time for everything, I suppose, but I think we had best remain outside of the realm of murdering and closer to the realm of fun making and happy evening enjoying. Executing is not murder. It is state sanctioned. Always forget or never forget. Always forget what they tell you, but never forget what I tell you. Fromage, my dear, I believe you are in your cups. Please, let us go to the croquet field. I see the carriages are approaching. Oh. Fromage, you know this cast structure that makes you... It is it is something that we, we would cast off, that we would put away, that you executioners would be outside. I cast off the cast? I... We, I then no, no longer should you be seen as a, as a nothing... And only marry within the executioners. <laughs> if you join with this strange man, your entire body will be in a cast. I have no politics here. I am simply a servant, whoever needs to be served. Oh, I like the sound of that, my dear. <laughs> I have brought my favorite executing implement to this party so I could show it off. This is what I used to send on the Marquis. Oh, my goodness. De Levon. Look at this beautiful, fine, wrought metal. What is it, my dear? I have never seen such a device. This metal came from the Near East. Oh. Forged in Africa. Yes. I hear that in Egypt, they have many devices for bringing those to the death and also returning them back from the netherworld. But I do not play such games. I do not play the Ouija board. I do not play the spinning tables. I only like to play games with balls. Death is final. There is no coming back. This I know. This is an age of of reason. This is an age where we must fight for new things. We must give our lives for the growing flame of liberty. Freedom for all, like in the colonies. You, You play your games. You talk of cultures long since burnt where they they had slaves, and it was known that liberty was in shackles. I do like your pep, strange revolutionary man. Even the libertine, even those who believe in liberty, will need someone to do away with the criminals. Well, I was never too attached to the aristocracy myself. If, if it pleases you, my darling, let us join with this strange man. Come to the croquet field. Let us discuss mm. this particulars over a lovely game. These past times, they, I will change your mind over them, but again, I think it is frivolity, silliness. Come, bring the wine. To the carriages. <laughs> I think that's seen. <laughs> All right. I don't know about you, but I think um, Von Smeen and Fromage are screwing. I'm, d- I'm into that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into that. I feel like you guys are enemies. I could, I could, I be, think I could be wrong. Too. Yeah. But I, or rivals, as the case Yeah. The next scene is taking place in the catacombs beneath the park, a very damp, ill-thought-out catacombs because of the moisture from the plant life above. It has been a burial plot over centuries for the nobility. There are sort of elegant grave markers above in the park showing where some of these important personages have been interred. But down in the catacombs, there is currently taking place a secret meeting of several parties who are plotting the overthrow of the French government. I'll, I'll, I'll bring Elaine, the constipated general, into this mix. I guess I'm going to go with Satine, the saucy maid. I'm going to bring Lil Jacques, the Lil criminal Jacques. mastermind. <laughs> So we're like in these catacombs, He's dripping. yeah, dripping, dripping. moist. Yeah. Do we catacombs. have like little lanterns? I guess is a very dark and dim yeah, like hooded, here. Yeah, hooded, yeah, like hooded, hooded lanterns. lanterns. Hooded lanterns. For we're sure. all dressed in cloaks. The midnight hour. The, the day is done. Definitely past our bedtimes. Bonjour, 
Yeah, the flame of liberty cannot be boiled in the flesh. That was the password. Good job. Come, let us make to the catacombs. Of course. Well, I know the way. Let me guide you to the best part. They've uh, sent me down here so many times to clean, just for spite. Tell me, mademoiselle, what makes it the best part? Was Well, there are wonderful truffles that are growing off the walls. And we may pick them and eat them. Truffles. <laughs> this is the food of the aristocracy. I do not believe in eating such tripe. I, th- I think that we will all be able to enjoy Whatever fruits we wish. Exactly! Uh, we must libertize the truffles. Everyone must have access to them. I feel as if eating this, I am becoming like the swine above us. You don't look like a swine. Do, do not wait too long. We must keep to our task, okay? Well, you, what is the task? The task, we, again, I remain us. We keep our masks on. We hide our identities for our own protection. But the task, the house above is still anchored to the aristocracy. The flames of revolution have not yet swept to this place. Uh, Leave that to me. I will infiltrate the house above. They will become like pawns in my hand. And I will turn the armies to your purpose. And I will make sure the common folk are with us. Do you know we know all the secrets of those who live here? All the secret ways to get into their chambers. Not every secret. I believe there is an artifact of which we are still ignorant. I heard tell of it as I was spying around the perimeter. Oh, the other? It's another bubble of the of these people. It will have no value when all men are free. I am not so sure. I have heard rumors. I have heard whispers in the night. I have heard that it comes from a faraway land and that it maintains occult powers. Yes, yes. They brought it only a few weeks ago now, installed it in the gardens. It has not been unveiled yet. No one has seen it. But there have been some strange goings on. A few of the serving girls have gone missing. And one of the uh, baker boys. It will be a dangerous time, especially when the violence comes. We uh, we should be remember to, to look for the marks on one another. That is yes. the only way to distinguish amongst our group is the mark. I, uh, I... I have definitely been branded with this mark, not in vain, monsieur. But leave all these things to me. I, being a very small man, will certainly be able to sneak into this area in order to find out more information. And I will spread among the folk to brand themselves with the mark, or at least put it on themselves with ink or blood, so that we know who our allies are. Be careful, though. We we have plots within plots. We must be careful. Hey, I walk so gingerly through the ranks of the men. I have noticed the way you walk so very gingerly. It brings a sparkle to my eye. You must be careful, Jean. Uh, uh, monsieur. Uh, do, not, do not reveal who I am. I know, I must Even be, though I am very small, be. I wish to remain inconspicuous. I make my pardons, my marimore. Let us make haste. We must go through the catacombs and find the right skeletons. If we find the right skeletons, we will be able to ask the bones of the saints to bless us. A blessing is what's needed, yes. Yes. Oui. And I do believe that there is a dead drop in one of the skulls, right? Where the messages are kept. That is what I meant by bones of saints, but clearly you are new to speaking in code. You know, there's just three of us down here. So, you know, I was getting a little easy on this thing. I'm you, sorry, I... You can, you can never be too careful when it you, comes to identities or codes. You bring the heat in my blood and I lose myself. Oh, you are lost and yet found. Come, my dear, let us go plunge the depths of this catacombs, search for the bones of saints. The revolution begins tonight. It begins tonight. Oui, oui. All right. <laughs> so are we screwing? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So, Al- Elaine, the constipated general, is screwing Lil Jacques, Lil the criminal Jacques. mastermind, mm-hmm. a very small man. Mm-hmm. And I, I think uh, he's friends with the Sassi I, I, yeah. I think so, yeah. I think Satine is... And I think, I think we're friends Lil too. Jacques is also yeah, friends with Satine. I think we're Satine. friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. So, I think this last intro scene, this is in the house. Mm. This is in the manor house of the, the lord of this yes. estate. It is coming on morning. Every, the, the servants who get up earliest have been up for a while making breakfast, making house, etc. And the insulation 
is still in place. The bubble hasn't popped mm-hmm. for these people. They're still living in the lap of luxury, yep. but there are whispers. Oh, yeah. So th- this scene is about the interaction of the household. All right. I want Madame Coraline, the true believing astrologer. Love right. it. And I think I'm grabbing Monsieur Fleur, the meticulous head of house. I'm I'm going to have yes. Ovaltine, the flirtatious grandma. Yeah. yeah? Cool. Is that it? Oh, Madame, Madame, I... Uh... The Coraline is ready for you. We, uh, I will take you to the parlor. Come, take my arm. Eh? You still got it, don't you, Signor Fleur, Monsieur Fleur? <laughs> oh, everything for you, Madame. Uh, you make my life so uh, wonderful. Uh, I see flowers whenever you are near. Uh, the stars do not shine as beautiful as your eyes, and uh, your tea will be ready in the parlor, uh, as well as the brandy and the port. Well, it uh, seems that you have it all in order. Madame Coraline has arrived recently, and she uh, wants to t- uh, tell you of your future. Excuse me. Ah, yeah. Hello. Madame Coraline, uh, uh, may I uh, introduce uh, uh, the mademoiselle? I uh, know Madame who you are. I have seen your face in my cards. Scorpio is rising. Aquarius is in Pluto. Venus is in Aries. All has become clear to me. And Fleur, my cup is empty. Please fill it for oh, me. Oh, we must have no. your cup overfilling, overflowing. Remain as you are with your cup in your hand. I wish to read the tea leaves. I C- will. I guess I get will... me a cup that's less port yes. and more tea, please, yeah, Fleur. I will be a return uh, very quickly with a decanter. You are a very beautiful old woman. And you have lived as if many lives in this house. When you were a young girl, as an adolescent, as a blushing maid. Yes, I can see it all now in this beautiful, beautiful porcelain that is laid before us. Yes, I often see a lot of things in the porcelain. It's very reflective. You can see a lot of your parts if you know what you're doing. I... I'm not sure what you mean. Her parts are so beautiful, though. You, uh, Madame Olvantine, uh, for years, I did not know her when she was a young mademoiselle. I wish I could have beheld such beauty. I would not have given him the time of day. <laughs> he is a turd to the men that I have ridden. It oh. is true I am but dust on their boots. I am blessed to even be in the presence of the Madame Olvantine. Oh, yes. As I look into the porcelain, I see the image of a handsome, strapping man. But I cannot see if you are riding him or what is that? What is happening? The image is becoming blurry. It is as if, no, it cannot be. What did you do to this man, Madame Ovaltine? Who knows what I did to him? <laughs> Give him the, the time of his life, no doubt. Uh, or... he, will, he will know pleasures unbound. Uh... I'm not sure if this is an image of the little death or the big death. Do not say such things to them, madame. I only say what I see. Must I keep this secret from you? How will you know the veracity of my prophecies? At this point, I would I would surmise that the the true death, the the big one, is is closer to me than any sort of uh, uh, pleasures that I once had known. Oh, my dear, what will you do? What will you do to prepare for this journey that you are about to take? Gee, it is not so. No, I cannot imagine losing the madame. Uh, no. I, I will I will prepare with another cup of that fine port, please, Fleur. And yourself, uh, Madame Coraline, will you... She wish... will have the... the. I understand, mm. Madame. Uh, yes, oui. of course. The, the thin water. As you, as, as you wish, yes, of course. Um... Uh, I, I, I'm very sorry I've gotten ahead of myself. What exactly was it that you wished to ask of me as you brought me into your chamber, madame? Why do you insist on trying to bilk my son and his family out of their fortune, you charlatan? Sacre bleu! What can you possibly mean? You know what game you're playing. You think I have not crossed with you before, your kind? Ah, my kind. (coughs) You speak of my people. Hmm. Zut, law! Do not offend uh, Madame Ovaltine with your d- disgusting I do not know prophecies. how much more offended I could be that he brought a, a gypsy room into my house. Floor. Ah, you are not only a bigot, but you are an ugly old woman with no taste in porcelain. 
Get out of here, you! Get out now! You, you are not welcome in this chamber any longer. I will not. I will smash this porcelain now. <laughs> I will smash it upon your table. And I will smash it upon your chair. <laughs> and I will smash it upon your head if you do not take back what you have said about my people. If my son were not a fool, I would have you run out on a rail. But he seems to want to protect you. What do you know about the rails? You know nothing about the lives of the workers on the railroad. You will get what you deserve, you, sh you faker. Now, get out of here, you devil worshiper, you trash. I worship no devil. I only worship the wonderful things of the stars and the moon. You are crazy aristocrats. You are racists. I wish that you would die in this house immediately. Oh, I cannot say such terrible things to Madame Ovaltine. I, I now must physically remove you from this place. Do not. Do worry. not unhand me. Go. Go out. Out. No, I think we're, we're just, just friends. friends. Okay. Yeah. Just one. Hey, I'm down. You know, whatever. I think she's more. She's a flirt. Oval, so. Ovaltine, the flirtatious racist grandma. Yeah. Is enemies Definitely. with. Definitely very racist. Madame Coraline, Bigoted. the true believing astrologer. For sure. You, we're going to introduce the killer and do some killing in this scene. Everyone's arriving at this estate. Outside of Paris, probably like a day or two's travel. Like, it's outside the city for sure. Everyone's gathering for like like a summer solstice party. You know, like some there's like some sort of festival or like sort of... So there's going to be like a ball and there are like all these events tagged for this weekend, week. But these are the people who are now have arrived very early for this. So they've probably been here for a day or two already. They've been hanging out. They're out in the garden far out in the garden, and, and they're finishing up dinner. The servants have been clearing away all the food already. Most of the, They cooked all the food and made all the food here out in the garden. And now it's sort of been, most people have like left this communal dining area, probably with one long table, just like the nasty lasties are there, you know, finishing their wine, whatever, eating the last bits of food, enjoying the conversation, just, you know, really wanting to hang on to the magic. I would like to be Flemmy de Brooks, the half-witted revolutionary. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> And I'll be Rosalie, the haughty milkmaid. We are kind of arm in arm walking through the labyrinth. Yes. In yeah. The, in the heart of the garden. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Rosalie, um, I, I, I've been meaning to ask you something all night. <laughs> oh, you're in your cups. You're so forward. Um, I, I, I know this is is a little bit presumptuous of me, but would you be interested in in um, either going with me to see the duck pond or perhaps uh, overthrowing the state. Oh, you're naughty. But I don't quite understand either euphemism that you've used, Femme. Oh, um, I, I, I don't know if, um, if I have a euphemism. Uh, my, my eyeglasses prescription has been updated, but I, it's true that I, I do have a little bit trouble seeing far away. It's funny, uh, coincidental, in fact, far away, 30, 40, 50 feet away from you down the pathway. You can see sort of the middle, uh, you assume, of the labyrinth of the hedge maze that you're in. And in the middle of it is this statue. It uh, looks very ancient stone. It looks very chthonic. It's almost abstract. It does have the form and shape of a humanoid. It almost looks like someone who's crucified or something like that, but they don't have a head. And instead, it's almost like they're acting as almost like a, their arms are like tree branches. And so there are these like odd undulating things coming off of their arms. Again, they don't have a head, like but they are obviously a humanoid Flem, body. come. I will, I will take option number two. Take me and overthrow my state against this statue. Oh, uh, I don't think I've ever done it against a scarecrow like this before. But uh, I don't know if you'll help me with this this zipper. I I I might be able to. Oh, I don't know if I can perform. Would you rather we visit your duck pond? Oh, uh, I I really I really I really was talking about the duck pond. Oh oh oh. 
And as the two begin to join, they're sort of stumbling, still arm in arm, making out, pawing at each other as they're making their way towards the statue. And instead of like the cleared a labyrinth pathway, oh, which is Flem, it's like you have a hundred hands, dirt or you know soft grass, you're stepping on these very tubular snaking vines that are suddenly all over the ground. So your footing is a little bit off as you're sort of stumbling your way towards this statue. And as you're maybe not even noticing, really, it's dark. This entire central area of this labyrinth is covered in vines at the bottom. of or The floor is just vines. How, how are you touching me in so many places at once? It's oh. amazing. And, I, and Rosalie trips and falls backwards, pulling you down into her arms on the ground. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Then you are, you are a half-wit but all man. I, I I feel a strange a strange sensation. I've never I've never been both on top and under a woman at the same time before. There's no wind, but the all the bushes around you begin to shake. All the vegetation begins to just vibrate. It's almost like they're blowing in the wind, but there is no wind. It's it's causing this sort of odd sort of serrating sounds. It's like the whole world is shaking at my pleasure. Oh oh yes. I like the way that you're binding my wrists. I mean, if that's if that's what you like. And that's when Rosalie she's starting to feel these pinpricks on her on her back and on her buttocks and on her her thighs or just but all from the ground as Oh Jutta Law, some sort of insect. Oh no, no, don't worry, we're not related. No, no, it's it's something is oh Flim, please get off me, no. Oh, uh, of course. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, don't tell don't tell the priest. And as Flem, you sort of like leverage yourself up. Rosalie is pierced by a very thick thorn that plunges into her back and through her chest. Through her sternum, this very thick thorn just bursts. And like, so there's blood starting to gush out of her and more thorns are starting to then burst basically out of her. Oh, all these sort of Jesus breaks. God, I, I'm sorry. I know I should have waited till marriage. <laughs> and as you're sort of stumbling backwards away from this bloody mess, you can see all the vines around you starting to sort of writhe up almost like snakes. Uh, they're starting to like move around your legs and sort of pin you in place. And the statue is like turning, orienting itself towards you. So you're looking like it's like your chest to chest, or a few feet away. From, it's obviously like <laughs> turning itself. Oh, Lord, I would drop to my knees, but I don't know where they are anymore. And I think that's at that point that the vines that are sort of wrapping around you, again, like snakes moving their way up, pop open, almost like orchids or like flowers. So it's like they have mouths and then they start attacking you like, no, Jesus. <laughs> and they, they go in your mouth and your nose and they're just bearing you down to the ground, eating you, sucking your blood, digesting you. The next scene begins during the setup for a party for someone's introduction into high society. Yes. We are actually in a part of the park that has a gazebo, uh, like little cute tables, a little makeshift dance floor, and there's lots of really beautiful flowers everywhere, and uh, everyone is in their best gowns, their best suits. There is a string quartet that is playing lovely music. All of the most important aristocrats and members of high society are starting to show up. It's not yet a rager. The families are starting to appear, and it is someone's first gala uh, event. Totally. This, this lovely summertime. It's it's like a luncheon. Oh, I'm going to play Booth. Cool. Then I will jump Hi, right Julie. into Julie Moiro, our inquisitive youth, who I think may be, in fact, the person who is being presented. Madame, may I bother you for this dance? I, uh, uh, my dance card is, uh, uh, slightly full, but, uh, you, uh, have a, uh, certain look about you. Perhaps I can sneak you in. I am always up to take a beautiful woman for a dance when it is her introduction into society. It, it is my pleasure to be here while you are going, transitioning into womanhood. It is very, very fortunate that I could see this thing. It is very rare to see such happiness in this time. Thwoop! As a fan appears in front of her face and she begins to fan herself. Very 
alluringly sort of. She's very young, probably 16, something like that. She's this amazing reddish honey hair that's been like piled up in these tears. She has earrings and a necklace, uh, all of these beautiful stones. I'm thinking for her that they're probably like a, a mix of sapphires and emeralds. She has uh, uh, brace- bracelets on wristlets. And she's wearing a beautiful gown, powder blue has this sort of glint in her eye that she is like not a dummy. Like she is, she is intelligent. Uh, It seems to demurely just be fanning herself waiting for the next move. You are not, (laughs) ha ha, you show your youth. Uh, Come, let's dance. You, if you were, if you are wiser, you would, you would know that these, these games are, you know, come on, let's, let us dance. This is where I get my joy and I will, I will gladly show you around the dance floor and make you twirl. Is it not the gentleman's duty to present his hand to the lady he wishes to dance with? But of course. Oh, as she takes his hand and they move out onto the dance floor. There's sort of a gasp because this is like against protocol. Her dance card has already been fulfilled. There are many very eligible bachelors here who are looking Mm -hmm. to meet this person. You see, I have made you... The center of attention you are, we have made a small scandal. This is, when you, are, when you have more experience in the world, in the ways of, of l'amour, you will understand, okay, my young I do one. not know. I am so, you must teach me. You must <laughs> Again, show me. Uh, more experience and you will know that it is not, uh, I'm not one to teach young women, okay? I, I will teach you how to. Teach me the, the customs of your land. I will teach you how to seduce a man. This is information I need. My mother has told me much, but from a man's perspective, yes, perhaps this would be interesting to know. And as he twirls her around the board, he's, he points, you see these boys with their fiery eyes. They, they desire you because they cannot have you at this moment. I think they desire to slip their rapiers within your chest, perhaps. <laughs> mm, no, they have uh, different weapons for different purposes, my dear. Uh, the weapons, I do not know why they bring them to such an event. This is so boorish. We should have only flowers here. Mm-hmm. Come come with me. I will whisper some secrets. You, you have much to learn. And he leads her around behind a topiary on the edge of a, of a dancing young woman. Yes, yeah, behind the topiary, exactly. Says, Listen, okay. Yes, tell me. I'm, tell me. regardless of my accent, I am very Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must be. You must be quick. My mother will be looking for me soon. And <clears throat> you, there are reputations amongst amongst many men that <clears throat> you will learn these things in time. But oh, what is your reputation, uh, my? As this conversation is taking place, and and the two of them are leaning in close conspiratorially, this topiary of the dancing girl, or was it a dancing girl? Suddenly, it's a topiary of a bear. Quick, tell me. Tell me quickly. My governess is also going to be looking for me, and my father, and my brother. So who does the killer attack? Is it striking now? It's not striking, but it is starting to exhibit transforming qualities. Mm. I think, was this here before? The dancing girl? What? Oh. Uh, was, no. No, no, it was not. What is this magic? Have you, have you had a gardener change the? The, the bushes as I had my back mm. turned. You're I would, such I would so think that I, I would think that I was in my cups if, if you too did not witness this phenomena. I have never tasted uh, the spirits. Ah, you're a silly girl. You have much to learn of the world. I will. I will learn it all. Suddenly, imperceptibly, the air begins to fill with a strange pollen, as if. Everything is clouding with these puffs of white. Quickly, give me a kiss before they find me. Let me see what you have to teach me. Oh, my dear. And he kisses her on the hand. Oh. She seems less than enthused about that, but as it is her uh, coming out party, just continues to fan herself, which oddly has this effect of like moving the pollen away from her face, I guess, to some degree. Is she sort of like fanning herself? I don't, I don't Or see. maybe not. As, as the pollen is struck by the fan, it sort of whirls more violently yeah. around her until the two are standing in a tornado of tiny white pollen. It looks as if there is an expression of menace 
in the face of the topiary bear. And is the pollen coming out of certain a certain part of the topiary, or is it just emanate, it's just, just everywhere? everywhere. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, what a magical night! Oh, I have never experienced something like this. This this is exactly what I had hoped for. What a beautiful night! This is dangerous, my dear. I'm targeting everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's nine of spades. Gonna be nine of spades. So we just need something higher than that to beat it. Quick on his feet. And ever the the gamesman, Booth Van Smeen, senses danger and grabs the fan out of the young woman's hand. Oh. And Oh Booth, you beast! Quiet girl, and puts her under his arm and ah! be- betrays I've never been extreme strength. Ah! You silly girl, watch it. <laughs> and he fans the fan and, and clears a small path and jumps through and they look back. So you have run off with her under mm-hmm, your mm-hmm, arm. Is... So angered by this insouciance, <laughs> suddenly the bear, Topiary, springs into life. Whoa! Lunging forward and tries to take a swipe at Julie with its outstretched leafy claw and a queen of hearts. Julie, unfortunately, (laughs) the leafy claw first hooks into her jeweled necklace, and instead of sinking directly into her flesh, it grows a vine wrapping itself around her beautiful jeweled necklace, sparkling with amethysts, and pulls it tighter and tighter around her neck as the gorgeous, expensive jewels sink Booth. ever deeper into her throat, Booth. strangling ah. her and removing all possibility of breath. Yeah. And she's yanked from his ah. arms as he ah. leaps out away. Ah, oh, my dear. Oh, no. And and flees the scene. This is the evening, later in the evening. Yeah, because that was the... like in, in like the daytime. It was like a lunch. Yeah. In the house... In the chambers of the family, the disappearance of the young woman has, in sort of the flurry and action of the night, gone unnoticed for the most part. Mm. Yeah, I mean, many people I would assume are like, "Oh, she ran off with someone," Mm -hmm. and it's a party. People are still like raging and stuff. So this is in the in the chambers of the household. I would Mm -hmm. like to be Ovaltine, the flirtatious grandma, and I will be Elaine, the constipated general. Perfect. Okay. Oh, where is my granddaughter? I want to see her dancing with the handsome, rich, extremely French, not at all foreign man. I have not seen her, mademoiselle. Uh, I had hoped to uh, 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 approach you about a certain tea I had heard you had, a a, a certain uh, laxative, I believe it is called. Oh, yes. That is the aphrodisiac tea. Let's see, where did I keep the aphrodisiac tea? Oh, where's my butler? Butler, butler, oh, he's always off somewhere with that man. I have oh. not seen Monsieur Fleur uh, in, uh, since lunchtime. I, I, I'm sure that he is uh, taking care of uh, uh, many tasks. Uh, I, I, perhaps I can help you look for it. Uh, it is here in the chamber? Yes, you can help me look for it. I'm going to just bend over like this and uh, lift my leg uh, my arm, I mean. Ha, 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 ha. Lift my arm. I would never lift my leg in the presence of a gentleman. Ha, 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 ha. It is okay, mademoiselle. I have seen many legs lifted on the battlefield. Oh, you you make me blush. Well, here it is. The Oh, what did you say you were looking for? Oh, uh, mademoiselle, uh, a laxative, I believe, uh, I was told you may have. A laxative? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Do you have trouble in the bowels? It is a side effect from my time at the front. Uh, It has been something that has now been with me for many years. I feel I can 
bare my soul to you, madame, oh, that I my, am safe with you. Oh, my goodness, it sounds like it, it's a side effect from your time at the back. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, Mademoiselle, I, uh, I am a uh, general who leads from the front. My, my goodness. Um, I'm not sure what to do about this situation. You see, you are you are a very, very handsome man. And that is why I have uh, sought you out, madame. Perhaps you can help me get unstuck. And so we may uh, discover pleasures that maybe we have not experienced before. Oh, fiddlesticks. I knew I shouldn't have insulted that witchy woman. She probably had a laxative. She and those people. But, oh... Now I'm really in a pickle. Ah, the Roma. You speak of the woman, who the astrologer. She is uh, quite interesting. You, uh, she has offended you. Everyone who is not purely French and aristocratic offends me. They are all trying to steal our women. And uh, that's when you hear a gentle tapping at the window. Uh, what 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 was that? Is that you, Jolie? Jolie, is that you? I want to see you in all your finery. Uh, Madame, we are on the second floor. I I, I do not believe uh, Jolie. Uh, per- perhaps she is at the window. Uh, perhaps perhaps it is a suitor. What's uh, that racket? Is there some crazy foreigner trying to break in here and steal our ladies? Come and ma- she there's a, she a pale a pale hand taps. You see it just through the window pane. Ma- Madame, stand back. I, I, I will investigate. This. No, I can take care of this intruder myself. And she, Madame, please open the window. And that's when a rush of vines, with the bo- carrying the body of Jolie, ah! vines spreading out of her mouth and eyes, crashes into. Ovaltine like a wave. Uh, all right. I guess I'd better draw cards. You three cards for me. For All right, so a wave of vines Attacking carrying Ovaltine. the body of his of her granddaughter crashes into Mademoiselle Ovaltine. Ovaltine is going to grab the decanter of port mm-hmm. from the night table and is going to douse the vines in port, which caused them to very momentarily shrink back. And she runs to the other side of the room and tries in abject horror to hide behind a magnificent painting of her great-grandfather. Okay. Mm. And these these vines whip back and catch a lantern and mm. knock it over. And the, the port and the lantern... Boom! <laughs> go up in flames and they this now flaming <laughs> rush with a body in the center just crash towards Elaine. And the body is sort of burning itself as well like the skin is the blackening, hair's the hair is burning. Yeah. Okay. Elaine busts out his military saber obviously that he carries as he is a military man. He is a general. Uh, he was in the cavalry before he became a general hacking away at these things that like back them off. Mm. Ha! Stay behind me, madame! Something is awry here! The witchcraft you spoke of! Foreigners! Foreigners! And the flames are are dashed out as well as everything stills and quiet. Is this not your granddaughter, Julie? Ah! Yeah, it's quiet. The scene is quiet. There's just dead vines. The body of the young woman with vines all sticking out of it is laying in the center of her chamber. (sighs) Madame, something very unnatural... Uh, it's happening. Uh, I, I, this can't be my granddaughter. It can't be. She runs toward the body, tries to feel for a pulse. Elaine is a bit more skeptical, but his duty to the madame, he must protect her. So he, he also rushes forward, though, I think a little bit more slowly. So he maybe reaches the body second. She begins to pound on the chest, screaming, Jolie, 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 my granddaughter, how could this have befallen you? That witch, that witch! And that's when a a strong perfume starts to waft through the through the room and you you look over to see a bouquet on the dressing table and the flowers are dancing and writhing and this perfume they're, they're, it's almost hypnotic no stay back demon spawn yeah the uh, elaine though is 
the fragrance in your nose, you're drawn to these flowers. Oh. You're pulled to them. Oh, my time, my time. I remember you met down there. Uh, but I sort of shake my head. I, I say, what? Uh, I sort of look over at Julie, and is she moving as well, or is she's she still? She's dead, yeah. All right, she's just dead on the ground. I say, something, something is happening here. Some, so, what? This is the pollen of the devil. Uh, something is, has killed your granddaughter. How, how could I have let that crazy woman into my beautiful mansion? She's killed her. All of the peasants and all of the foreigners must die. And you begin to cough and choke in the middle of your yelling spree as the, as, as the scent of like, I, I, the, I, t- the tastes of, fl- uh, and this is specifically targeting, yeah. you know, it's like, like. You're almost like you're regurgitating the tea that you had earlier. So it's coming die. out. At this, at this point, Elaine, who is a secret revolutionary, he's friends with Satine, he's screwing Lil Jacques. They were all in the catacombs and masks. I think that he's becoming enemies with you as you keep talking about killing and destroying, you know, the, the common folk. So I, I yep. think we're enemies at, at this point. Yep. But you feel rising in your in your throat and gullet. This almost like choking with a with a astringent tang of tea filling your nostrils oh, as you try to catch your breath. This is not the laxative I had hoped for. And it's it's attacking you. Ovaltine coughs hysterically through her rant and vomits all over the corpse, thereby clearing her throat of this in, insidious sort of tea drenched uh but she can't stop vomiting right. yeah there just continues and yeah, continues and continues coming. and and so ev- eventually it does pass and you lay there shaking quiet elaine has left in horror it, the, too many overwhelmed by all the horrible things and you're like violent retching and fled the room and you you're weak and there's no fight left in you and and your body seizes and fails as you look into the dead face of your granddaughter lying there. So I just waste away and perish at that point. <laughs> yeah, you die. Yeah. yeah, I die in a in a fulminating racist <laughs> classist <laughs> rage. Yep. Uh, Puking so all Lane over my granddaughter's corpse. Uh... We interrupt our story here, and we'll continue in our next communique. Uh, I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Joho and on Instagram at board underscore ghost. You can follow my book club podcast at woundandstab.com and my media review podcast at newdoyoushow.com. Ken, where can people find you? Board Ghost, you can find me, Ken Breeze, all over the interwebs. But I love Twitter and Instagram and my own website, burlingsbeard.com, B-E-R-L-I-N-G-S, beard. And you can find me at Twitter and Instagram on the same name. I am a for hire dungeon master in the New York City area. Would love to play games with you. Hire me to run your game. All right. And Lucian, where can people find you? Hi, my name is Lucian Khan. I am also one of your players. You can find me on Twitter at O-Theogony. That's O-H underscore T-H-E-O-G-O-N-Y. You can also find my very ghostly game, Dead Friend, a game of necromancy on drivethroughrpg.com. It is a game about resurrecting the dead using tarot cards. It's a two-player RPG. It's a lot of fun. And perfect for ghosts like you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, so yeah. awesome to have well, you on. Well, Can't wait you. for it's, the next. It's, it's a joy to see all these people <laughs> <laughs> find their it's final fine. resting place. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so to learn more about the players and engine in our story, visit boardghost.com. You can attempt to pierce the veil and contact us at Board Ghost World on Twitter. Shout out through the ether if you have desires we can fulfill. Leave reviews and comments on iTunes, your preferred listening portal. And please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest episodes. We'd like to thank Pat Couples for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com or on his band's website, hotelsandhighways.com. You can also help us out, collaborate in making the show by going to our Patreon at patreon.com slash boardghost. You can get access to the full episode story a little bit early. Uh, art in wallpaper, mobile, and desktop formats of that we make for the show. And you also, at certain tiers, can get access to how to play videos for some of these great games that we get out here and play. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. Yeah.
don't agree with me 